Ladies, gentlemen, and disappointments. We are coming to you live from the Woman Caves in New York and Connecticut. My name is Leslie. And my name is Melissa. And we are Verbally Disastrous. Hello, everyone. This is your host, Leslie, of the Verbally Disastrous Podcast, where we are on over 20 platforms and YouTube. This is a two-part, because it was so long, it's a two-part episode of all of our group sitting around on a Sunday, enjoying the cocktail of our choice. Now, for our first part of our discussion, Donna one of our friends that's in the circle, she brings up the first topic. So let's take a listen and see what she brings up as our first suggestion. Check it out. Who got wetness on the floor over here? I think that was so one, of the, one of these savage yes, I know it is. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hello, oh, everyone. Hand, though, this is your host, it. Leslie, and I have a room full of people, and I believe we're going to talk about a variety of things. We'll start with, I'll go with my left to my right. Give a shout. Yo. You gotta say who you are. <laughs> Yo, I'm uh, Jay Honey on YouTube. Go check me out. What's up? It's Tom. It's TSW Triple O H 23 on YouTube. <laughs> Hi, I'm Donna. I have no YouTube and no <laughs> Instagram, but I'm really fun. <laughs> uh, I'm Melissa. You heard me before. I'm with Leslie. <laughs> And of course, this is Leslie. I think our first topic is yeah, let's go the drinking with culture and the drinking ages culture and how you learn how to drink. I think yeah. that's our topic. How do you, Tom? How do you learn how to drink? By getting way too fucked up and then not doing it next time. How do you learn yeah. how to not puke? Like how do you like in a younger age? You gotta bring your expert witness, John. Just, to, just, just like that. You learn, just you puke and then you learn better. You get, you find out your limits. You get a little too, too schwazy. Things start, you seeing, start seeing triple, and then you're like, let me not do that next time. Did I, did I mix Jim Beam with tequila last night? No. Maybe let me not do that next yeah. time. Yeah, that's savage. Yeah, that's not a good plan. Yeah. Savage, right? Jim Beam. And you gotta remember the meme: beer before liquor, never sicker. Beer before liquor, never sicker. So you want to go like shot and then a beer. Oh, wait, wait. Let it know. Liquor before beer, you're in the clear. There you go. <laughs> and this is something Spoken like, like professionals here. You don't really know, but you learn. You right. learn as you grow up, and you learn from your surroundings. You learn from the mistakes your friends make, and then if you have cool enough parents, you... Learn from your parents' friends what's going on. I had a sheltered life growing up and didn't know about any of the whole world of drinking until I got, like, thrust into the military. So I always felt like, all right, when I'm a parent, I'll let my kids dabble here and there so that they learn how to control themselves so they're not, like, submersed right. into the whole world. Which, like, it was, like, I sex and drugs plan. and everything, you know, all that stuff. And I think it's a good plan before they're 21. Yeah. That your way they can know. have some limits. You yeah, your plan has to have parents. limits. You can't have them doing shots, drinking all this no, heavy alcohol. No, your plan has to have limits. They couple have to beers, learn. You know, they could try it, but that's about it. You, you, yeah. You, you still have to parent. You can't have them going nuts on you. So now, little by little. you guys with the dating... As a young person, oh, oh shit, as a young person, how do you feel that dating apps and different options to be able to find people is good compared to, say, now our older generation where we feel like there's so many choices, so now only a small slice of the percentage of the population is out dating, the rest of the people are hanging. How do you guys feel... Dating is as, as young folks. We got Tom and Johnny on the panel. Let's get let's and get the youngest to go first. State your age. Because I see your viewpoint. John, you're the youngest, so uh-huh. tell them what, how you feel in high school. So 
You're how old? I'm 16. Okay. I don't know. I mean, I, I haven't really been on the dating scene. I don't think I'm ready for that type of deal. Everyone's kind of rushing, especially at my age. I, I feel like I have to better my... Truth be told, I'm a fucking dickhead, and um, I've, 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 I've seen uh, females my age, and uh, I'm, I'm not impressed, to say the least. That's totally a good thing. It's like self-respect right there. Especially the area we're from. Um, I, don't, I don't know how it is in other places, but especially here, I mean, they're, they're a little Go crazy. Go give, give a broad area where you are. You're in New York. Upstate yeah, York. yeah, upsta upstate, upstate New York. Upstate, right? Not not in the city, but uh, not in trailer park. Not trailer park yeah, no, there's 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 not a meth lab in the back, but uh, <laughs> we're definitely not on the uh, hundred and whatever the hell street. You know, not but uh, area. exactly. I feel like I have to better myself before I can. It's a big responsibility, and uh. I mean, I just, I don't know. I don't like responsibility, and I've, I've seen totally my, my experience watching other people go through relationships. It looks difficult. It looks uh, very stressful, very painful, emotionally t um, draining. Well, how do you see your friends who are dating in high school? I mean, they're just I mean, assholes. You have a strong opinion that you don't want that type of feel. How do you feel about your friends that are dating in high school and, like, how they get into I mean, I feel like it's their life if that's what they want to do. I'm, I'm one of those. No, no, I make that very clear. Uh, that, that's really all I all I can do. I mean, if if uh, Tom, Billy, and Joe want to go uh, mess with the uh, old Susie over there, I mean, that's their business. Uh, they go and do that. But I feel like there's other stuff in my life that's that's higher on the priority list to see. Such as. Uh, school, uh, my sports, thinking about college type deal, what I'm gonna do yeah. for the rest of my life. Yeah. I think that's very wise. Again, that, it all goes hand in hand with uh, focusing on myself, especially being a dude. Women look at you like, what do you have to offer? It's like, no, what do you have to offer, ma'am? Ma'am. Yeah. lady, you know? Are you dating 30-year-olds and calling them ma'am? <laughs> I mean, if you are, it's totally fine. I just want to know the situation of the girls or boys that you want to make out with. Well, uh, Yeah, well, but he's totally uh, respectful. Right. So, so, so it's not old. Like, yeah. No, it's, a, it's not even yeah. good. She's a good child. That's called ball breaking. Yes. Nah. Mm -hmm. How about Tom? What do, what do you feel Tom, about Tom? How about Pass, you? Passing the mic. Moving 10 years past the. Ten, 10 years into the future. Tom, I'm 26. What kind of questions do you guys have? What is your dating life like? You're in a different world than he is. Absent. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, Single. I just got out of something, so I'm kind of thinking about myself. Something has hollow. Three years. Okay. So yeah, in your 20s, that's a long time. So now it's, it's Tommy time. Kinda, it should be Tommy time. It's all Tommy time. time. I'm thinking about myself, what I have to do to be where I want to be in the future. What's your vision of a perfect woman? Oh, boy. At 26? I feel like it's kind of like they have to have a, like uh, certain qualities. And there needs oh, to be... Uh, I've, I've, I've done the, the anxiety well, thing. I've done the, the seems like she's a good family-oriented kind of thing and turns yeah, crazy. Three shots of tequila, she becomes a monster. No, he did. He did want that. He, he did want someone to settle down with it. He's disappointed. I, mean, I, right mm -hmm. I don't know what to, to really look you for at this point. Right for you. 26. You want the family or thing? I'm just but now, you now I don't even know what I want. Like, I used to be able to see, like, the kids and the, and the marriage and all that shit in the future. Now, not being with the person yet, it, it's not so clear anymore. Now, Johnny, would you say when I said, what's your vision of a perfect woman? You got to pass the mic back over to him to... Uh, I mean, I mean I, you're 16, so. yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know how well this is going to sound. They've got to have like, you know, certain qualities. I, I feel like loyalty is a big one. Trust another. And uh, of course, love. Those, that's like the three legged stool. And if you don't have that, I mean, 
<laughs> if you don't have that, I mean, what what the fuck do you really have? I mean, to be honest with you, if you can't trust her, if you can't love her, and if you can't love her, I mean, why the hell are you even with her? That's you. I hope so. I hope my, uh, when you my get burned, you take it as a lesson and you go back to the Lesson of thing. what didn't work. And cry, cry a little bit and then hop back to it. Exactly. I think you should watch your brother and see what your brother does because I think you both have the same values. Well, he doesn't have the best track record. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's trial by error. Okay. <laughs> You don't you don't know what you're looking for until you find it. Right. I've experienced I've I've experienced right. your your romantic skill firsthand, so I don't know. <laughs> he has looked through it. He's looked through it. Landing him's Brother not a problem. Dude. It's you know because you're cute and you're adorable. Wanting to keep I don't know about it's that. It's actually one getting what well, you want to get. You can't really see and also. No. The energy that you put out, you shouldn't be getting any less. less in return. That's something that I found to be one of the biggest problems in my last relationship. About the return you, of the put, energy. you put all the energy out to make somebody feel good about themselves or do good at work the next day, make sure like they're happy and shit, but then you don't get it back. That's the worst. That's the absolute worst. If you're not getting the energy back that you put out, that shit's over before it starts. You know, he is cute. Now, let's move over to Donna, and she's going to explain what her perfect man is. That's what we're saying. Oh, so I'm Donna. I'm 45. I'm, like, literally old enough to be both their mothers, but I appreciate their viewpoints. I do. I have nephews who are similar ages. Uh, their views, I have one who's a man whore, and one who's afraid of Why women. Why are you laughing at that? You're mean. There's nothing wrong with women uh, I, I take that back. He used to be a man whore when he was a teenager. I encouraged it. It's fine. And then I have the other ones that are afraid of either sex. They hate people. Uh, me, my personal dating that. viewpoint is I've done the long-term relationships. I've done the hookups. And I'm really kind of okay in my 40s by myself. I yeah, like yeah. my friends. I like my alone time. I love my Kindle. I love my Netflix. I can go to the beach, but I can do anything by myself. So at this point in time in my life, like years ago, I would have loved that person who met everything that I wanted them to meet. But I don't think I ever, like, attain that despite my long-term relationships so I am comfortable in myself I go to concerts by myself I can go to bars by myself I'm not crazy about going out to dinner by myself but I'll do it just sit at the bar and I kind of have a personality that I will go out and I will meet people randomly and I talk and have a great time and I can go home with people or not go home with people. But I have a great time by myself. I don't think I was really comfortable with that until I was in my mid-30s. Comfortable being by yourself. Comfortable not, being out searching. by myself yeah. and not searching. So before that I had friends who would join me for my random joints. But at 30... Depends. Many places, not joints. Not joints, not like, <laughs> yeah, like, like journeys, journeys, journeys. Sometimes joints. So I would, like, be calling people, and I work a weird schedule. So I would be calling people, and I'd be like, oh, do you want to go out? Do you want to go hang out? And they'd be like, oh, no, I'm going out to watch Netflix with my boyfriend. And I was like, okay, I don't have a boyfriend, and I want to go out. So it took me a long time to be comfortable going to bars and concerts by myself. But I got sick of wanting one of my friends to be like, oh, yeah, I'll go with you. I'm waiting for people to say I want to do an event. 
and I was upset with myself for missing things. Yeah. So I started do doing things on my own, and I think it just opened up a whole new world. <laughs> I don't need a, other people to entertain myself, and you I found your own like sense of entertainment. I did, I did. Like this year on my birthday, it was full COVID. Nobody was going out, and my birthday is right after New Year's. It's, oh, is it? It's January 9th. I'm a Capricorn. It's uh, January 9th. It's, it's always the weekend after New Year's. Okay. Always, like so, nobody wants to go out. Yeah, nobody wants so. to do anything. This year, like I've done this before. But this year I was like, woke up the morning of my birthday. I was like, oh, let's look at hotels on the Jersey Shore. I went to the Asbury. I had the greatest time. It's beautiful. Nice hotel. Hooked up to a bowling alley. I went to the bowling alley. I met people. I was watching a playoff game. It was a Saturday night. I was watching a football playoff game. Met people that were like cheering for the other team. We ended up hanging up all night. Ten years ago, I would not have done that on my own. Oh, wow. And I've gone through the long-term dating situations. I've gone through the single situations. I've gone through the situations with all my friends getting married and having children and nobody wanting to come out with me because of family situations. And I'm, but I was upset with myself for missing things. So I started doing things on my own. So I go to concerts on my own. I go to bars on my own. I make friends everywhere I go. I'll give you a perfect example. A couple of years ago, I went to uh, Willie Nelson, the Abbott Brothers, PNC. It was a Friday night. I was so late. I got there at like 6.30. And the concert started at like 6. Oh, shit. But I just wanted to sit outside my car in my chair and just chill for like half an hour before I went oh, in. Shit. Because I just wanted to, like, have a drink. And, like, I was in traffic for, like, two hours. It was oh, a wow. Friday in the summer. It was, like, September, like, Labor Day weekend. Yeah. It was a nightmare. And I ended up talking to random people that I'd never met before. And I work in Sleepy Hollow. One of these people came from Poland and ended up living in Austinning. And we just ended up randomly talking. She's like, I, when I came from Poland, I came to Austinning, New York. I was like, what? That's like two miles away. Yeah. I was like, that's crazy. And that was probably five years ago when we're still friends, Facebook, and texting each other. She just texted me last night. She's like, I saw that you just told me that you have Jason Aldean tickets by yourself next that's week. That's country singer, right? Yeah. Okay. She's like, I, I'm going to try and get tickets to come and join you. I met her in a parking lot at PNC because I did something by myself. Right. You met somebody new that was like connected. Right. At the same time. And I've done that various times with the years. Like the first couple of times I did, I was very anxious. Mm -hmm. But I decided I want to do things for myself. Yeah. I want to con go to concerts. I have no problem going to concerts. That's what I mean. so and I got. I'm going to stop living because there's no one to do anything with. I learned that like you. Yeah. Before I left for California, I did the same thing. Went to concerts, joined a bowling league. Really wasn't dating, met people. Some nights were better than others. You met more people. I would took myself to uh, I'm City not Island always comfortable. for my birthday, sat yeah. there, ate, told the bartender before you knew it. I had a shot with everybody there. It was great. Things happened. Then I dipped to California. But now being 52, I mean, I would like, I would, I've always been looking for my best friend in a male right. form. Me too. Haven't found she's, him yet. She's got the pals in a female form. She just needs Right. Like, I want it in a male form. And I want yep. something trusting and just truthful. And right. do a lot of things together. I, you, what's yours is yours, um, what's mine is mine. You can, yeah. you can touch my titty, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have a great bra, by the way. Thank you. This one is excellent. Wait, wait, yeah. she don't have the chicken cutlets in that one. No, we'll tell you the chicken cutlets sooner later. <laughs> so, if I could meet that, fine. And trip, travel, you know, and enjoy. And whatever you do, you do. It's up to the two individuals, whether you want to live together, get married, and that's okay if I don't. You stay there, I stay here, that's great. But it's very hard to find these days. So do you boys think that's a way different outlook than what you were talking about earlier? Well, yeah, but you've got to remember. You have your 20s, your 30s, yeah. your 40s, your 50s. Right. They're young enough. They might think about marriage. We have all that married. here. Yeah. I've been the there, done that. Here. Right. We've got a whole circle of different age groups. Been there, done that. Did the alarm. Right. Thing. Exactly. Found it. I'm going to go on my own. I've been to PNC yeah. and Jones Beach by myself. Yeah, me too. And I'm not going to stop living because there's no one to do anything with. 
sometimes, like I said, it's better you than want it. for me to love people. Yeah. That sometimes, now that I'm a little older, sometimes I don't feel like going as much. Like, fuck it. But I'm going because that's right. the only way you're going to meet people. You really can't. The really. online thing doesn't go well. We were talking most about going time. golfing because that might be a cool way to meet some guys. Yeah. You, you do really, it. You, you really do can. it. You really I'm going back tomorrow to find the bowling alley here so in the fall really I can join the team I, again. I, I, when I, I did it, I went into the bowling alley and said, hey, does anybody need a member? There was a team that needed a player. I bowled with these three guys for three years. Had a great time with them. Great then friends. I tore my knee. Yeah. Yeah. John yeah. said something interesting. He said, you can't really, it, but that's, that's you implementing your theory. Right. Like you can't live, you can't decide to go through life hoping, hoping that you're going to, too short. So you gotta, whether or not you're going to find somebody, Oopsie but on the podcast. There's, there's difference between what you're saying, you can't live your life waiting for someone waiting else. For someone no. Because you you go through life and everybody it spreads out. Like all your friends spread out and do different things. And then you get to a point where, okay, I, I don't have that same group because they've all went off and they got married and they did different things. And then there's a very different, different, different age difference between 16, 45, and 50, 57. What are you saying? You feel left right. out or something? No, 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 I feel like that out. things didn't work out. Now it didn't work out. Home. And to meet somebody now at my age is, is tough. It really is. Because anybody my age is going for somebody younger. And it's, it's just different. It's very different. And now that everything is online and everything is so different. When I was your age, I never had a problem having a boyfriend or a date. I was out all the time. It was different back then. Now it's, you know, I really can't find anybody on the outside. There's a big, huge difference between 70. Oh, yeah. I've lived right. my life. I exactly. did everything. You're going to do everything we did. Work, get your career, go out and party, travel, meet people, have great stories. That's up and coming for you. I'm still making great stories, but, you know. Yeah, but there's going to be a point where the people... There's going, <laughs> there's going to be a point where, from the point of 16, where you have a group of friends, they disappear. They all get married. They go do stuff. And... You'll be lucky. Oh, yeah, you'll there's be, another you'll, element. You'll be yeah. lucky enough to have two real friends, real friends that you've known for a long time that you can really trust and count on. Because even the years through me, all the girlfriends I had this and that, none of them but one, and her husband, Michelle and Dave, the last two of the Mohegans that I always know I could count on are there. Donna, I just met, me and Leslie became good friends, and Tara, but all those other girls dipped out, whether they got married, remarried, had more kids, have a boyfriend, and they all just go somewhere else. Yeah. Girls don't, I don't think women stick together as no, much as men the way they and should. The I don't think they, they don't mean it purposely, no, but they need to have more camaraderie for each other and stick together and do things. Because even oh, when my son was small, I was the youngest out of the group, and those ladies didn't really take me in and invite me to stuff with their kids. And plus, my son was a pain in the ass. It was like, oh, Jimmy was the outcast. So, that didn't help either, but fuck them. <laughs> Fuck. I've gone through various stages of female friendship in my life. And I have a very rare thing that I am still very good friends with somebody that I was in Susu at three years old. And on the Young's Four Kids, that family took me on the adopt me, and we were sisters for life. And we spent all of our 20s and all of our 30s together. As well as our teenage Did years. Did she get married? She, they're, they're, they're all married, except for me. So you're still good friends with her? I'm still very good friends with her. Our lives are different. They all have kids and husbands. And, and as you get older, you don't, you don't do as much crazy shit. So right. I do a lot of crazy shit because I'm single and I do stuff. But I am very fortunate, I'm not going to lie, that those people are still in my life. 30 years later. Yeah, I have one group that's like that with yeah. Michelle and Dave. So I don't really hang out with family. them very often, but they're my girls. They're my family. We talk to each other once or twice a month. You have that thing like, you know, if you didn't talk to them for three months, you could call up and it'd be no problem. Like, no yeah. problem. Like you were Absolutely. just yesterday. Yeah. yeah, no problem. And I got that and you got that. Well, I got that and then I have months. my girls that I so hang out with. Like, say, long term? Yeah. yeah. There's and there's few, you yeah. There's stages. different people that you meet at different stages in your life, and you have to acknowledge that. You can't right. be 
resentful because like, you're not BFFs you know, anymore. Yeah, all those people you in the bar, you don't know. Yeah, they were good for a time. They weren't good they were forever. Good. They were good they were good for a time. Right. In that moment in time, they meant something in your life. Exactly. But they're not the people that are gonna exactly. continue and stick with you for yeah. right. the rest of your life. But you gotta remember, you meet friends and you meet acquaintances. Yeah. And you meet more acquaintances than you do friends. Right. Absolutely. All those people and it's very bar, rare that people have friendships that last 30, 40 years. It's a good, normal, 10 year span because people's lives change. Right. Oh, absolutely. Your situations change. Yeah. But yeah. you're a grateful human being if you have yep. Very grateful. those absolutely. people. Like, I feel like Leslie and Melissa are those people to each other. Yeah. Right. We became their friends. lives vary yeah. and like they come back years. and they they're like a river they like flow and then yeah. they go away and they yeah. come yeah. back my moments when I was raising Johnny where we would we would connect and then she would go out and do her thing right. and then we would reconnect I had to deal with my family so obviously we all have an understanding that right. we have your, lives. yeah your yeah. family your, I mean, your, your family. sons call her Auntie Melissa oh absolutely yeah, she's so the fan. So whether or not you spoke to each other <laughs> last month? Or like, no, no, they, no, they, 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 they did. Basically. Yeah, yeah, they basically do. Like Jimmy, which is Melissa's uh, son, he calls me Aunt Leslie. He referenced it one time. He was like, oh, Aunt Leslie's going to come in and go and swim in my fucking pool. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, Aunt Leslie's at my damn pool. I would... Best I'm friends, so kids call me Aunt Donna. Donna. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which my niece and my nephew call me Aunt Donna, but my best friend's kids call me Auntie Donna. We have not been like not friends since I was 17. She was 18 years old, but like Leslie's kids grew up with you. Yeah, Your ever since. Grew up with Leslie, like. Yeah, Johnny was like, like what Johnny, a toddler. John and, and Tom were smaller. Yeah, Jimmy Johnny was, was a, a toddler. Bigger. Yeah, John was a toddler when I met him. Yeah. Like my friend Michelle, Brendan's what 23, I guess. I was there for his birth. His baptism, all of it, and all have two kids behind it, and we went to high school together. And Michelle, I'll tell you a funny story on, on how we met and became good friends. Should I tell it? I should get Michelle to tell it. We were in high school, and I was walking up the steps, and she was behind me. Now, I knew her from the neighborhood, but just high by uh, let, Let's do a little preference there. The big public school in Yonkers. Yeah, 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 the big shithole in Yonkers. There's like, the three, there's like seven, 8,000 kids there. Oh, there was a lot of kids. It was just a public school. So I'm going up the steps, and I farted right in her face. <laughs> and I turned around, and I was like, oops. And that's and how she, you met. And she laughed, and we've been like sisters ever since. <laughs> <saints. laughs> and you have those people in your life that are going to yeah. be there when you're eating a well, wheelchair. Well, kids know I fart like an animal. Yeah. I fart when they don't care. We lit it on fire. We have a great time with those. So you have those people who are going to be in your life for the rest of your exactly. life, no matter your situation. And, she, she will be. and then you have people who are in your life for a time yeah. that, that were that, meant to be there for, for that, that time. Absolutely. And then you move on. And, and, and like I said, I'm grateful that I met Leslie later in life and have yeah. another good friend. Yeah. Tara's the same way. I mean, I could call Tara New Year's if I was in California and she'd pick up and it's like talking like I like saw yeah. her yesterday. And that's how friendships And our other real friend, Fran. And Fran, yeah. So we'll all not talk to each other for a period of time. Yeah, and I only and then we'll, to her. Yeah. She had me over her and her husband's very nice. Dear, Absolutely, in the Poconos. Believe it or not, Tara is how she and I connected. Yes. So I didn't meet, meet her directly. I, I met I Tara. Her. Tara was on the job. I was up on a damn scissor lift. And then Tara was down. She was my apprentice. And she was down on the ground as my ground person. And she was just like, I got a confession to make. I like women. I'm like, okay, that's great. Now give me another piece of uh, <laughs> exactly. cable tray yeah. and some hardware. And then let's, and let's keep totally it moving. That. Yeah, I don't give a shit. Just give me the damn material. You're, you're not shaking the ground rare, you know, with me. Rare, two women on top Yeah, of so yeah, I was just like, hand me the shit and let's keep it moving. We were sitting at... Shit, how many years ago was that? 16 years? John was little. John was like a toddler. Yeah, he was about three. We all connected, and, and that was at some bar. It was like an outside shit. It was in Mayapak, right on the water. We all like Wait, sat Mayapak. there. Okay. Yeah, it was in Mayapak, and then she's sitting there. I remember her like looking at me like, who's this little... chick? Yeah. Yeah. 
Not yet. Yeah. You're doing a podcast. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'll edit so it out. We, have to, we have to post Especially the podcast. Especially as females. I don't know if you guys experience this as males. You're a little older. You're younger. You're still in high school. So your friends are in the same circumstances, same world that you are. You're 26. Your friends have all graduated college. If they went to college, they're on their jobs, their own lives. It's different voice. But girls rarely meet somebody in their life, another female, like a friend, who's going to change their lives. And you don't realize at the moment, but you look back and you have these moments, and you have these moments of friendship that mean profound. Profound is going to change your life, and you don't realize at that moment. At the time, yeah. Boys are different. I mean, Tell you have those people who You and Javi, when you were a kid, what you used to do? You used to go hang out at his house. I mean, me and Javi, me and Javi really, like, I, I, I went to a different school halfway through, or in middle school, halfway through fifth grade. That's hard. He was so, in special ed. Thanks, Mom. You're so, welcome. So, <laughs> so, I mean, so, I'm sorry. Halfway. There's like nine other reasons. No, yeah, it was like yeah, special yeah. education I'm, I'm versus like normal education. Well, yeah, look, they put most of us in special you need a little help. I was a wild boy. Not, not, he, he wasn't because he was a retard. He was very smart. I was a wild boy. Yeah, Which yeah, totally but he, me and Javi... I can see it in your eyes. The wild boys. <laughs> yeah, he was. Me, I, I, I met Javi the first day going to that middle school at the bus stop. He, was, he lived right down the road from me. And basically, like, from then on, like, we would just see each other every morning. And, and David, too, but he was a great older. Then we started so playing football. Interact with Javi now. We, I mean, we don't we talk. We school, so that was 15, 20 years ago. Yeah, we don't really talk nearly as much as we used to. Like, we kind of got... Yeah, like if we talk to each other, like you were saying. Yeah, it would be like we just talked to each other yesterday. Like you guys were saying. So it's a rare moment that you meet people like that. Right. Yeah, for sure. Remember, too, is every once in a while, the thing just stop that person from falling away. Whether you're in a relationship or you're not in a relationship, and make plans with your friends and do things. Right. Like if you talk to them during the week, say, hey, look, come to, I think, January. Let's go skiing or let's do this and book it now and go. Yeah. So when you guys do meet ladies or get married and do that, you have that one, two trips a year and you go. Now I do want you to encourage that relationship that you just had with Javi. Because he's one of those people who meant something to you, even if you didn't know it back then, but you just said you brought him up since they were middle kids. school. Take a take it a lesson right. to some of us. Don't let everything else get Don't let it go. Get Once away. a year, yeah. you guys gotta either do a just dinner or twice or do a Trip you all live different lives. Snowboarding, whatever you like to do. You were in your younger years, and you're still in touch. I'll tell you what not to do. Continue the memories. Always be like, hey, yeah, dude, how you doing? Don't. Yeah. Always have your friends. You, you want to meet up in a bar? And he's going to be one of those people who are going to sustain you. show up. Yeah. 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 And you're going to meet, you're going to go through phases in your life, and you're going to meet a lot of different, various people. And some of them will be good, some of them will be bad. You brought his name up. Right. You, you escalated that. So he's one of those people who's always going to be there. You can call him from an airport. You've got to nurture the relationship yeah. and, and do not allow someone else to cause what, such a huge gap between communication. Which is as dull to me tend to do. Yeah. We do. We do. Yeah, because you just, you allow the person that you're hanging out to take the front seat and you go fuck everybody else. Not fuck everybody else, but that's what you end up doing. It happens, yeah. And I don't want you to think that we're like lecturing you because you're no. 26. No, 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 no. We're but that's what happens. We're our words of advice. Like, Stuff we make mistakes mm-hmm. in our friendships and our relationships. Absolutely. I definitely have. In friendships, definitely. Relationships, romantic relationships. I definitely have. So, like, I 
I'm not a preacher. I just want to say, like, acknowledge your relationships. Like, acknowledge yeah. your friendships. Both of you. Acknowledge yeah. your friendships. Right. Friendships more than anything else. Like, yeah. Relationships will come and go, but those people yeah. that you momentarily meet and then become part of your life, make them part of your life. Yes, everyone, everybody. Yeah. everyone goes in different directions and everyone goes in different ways. But notice those people who make a moment in your life. And you don't realize you're in the moment when you're in the moment. But later on, will. a week or two later, you realize that yeah. moment. It could be years later. A couple of years later. Why did I allow that? To like yeah. go by. Because time goes by. I'm telling you, as a person who's done it that you might on both some, sides. You might you're probably gonna meet some good close friends yeah. in your job and your field too. Yeah. yeah. That you're gonna work with for a long time and become very close with like a brother. Like when they retire, you'll still hang out with them. Yeah. Well, that's coming too, so and you'll, be ready. And you're twenty six, so you'll be in that professional situation when you're at somebody that you work with kids christening. Yes, you know what I'm saying? And you'll, you're going to find that too. So whoever you meet, don't lose those contacts. No. Bring them along. Or and people come in and out of your lives. They're, they're all meant to. Yeah. Meant to come in for a reason. Reason, yep. season, Absolutely. lifetime. Yep. Reason, or season, lesson. lifetime. <laughs> or a lesson. Yeah, that too. Yeah. <laughs> and there'll be people that you like became friends with and then you're like, they're a fucking douchebag. And you learn that lesson. You're like, oh, I should have known the side. Don't do you don't want to do. And, you know, but don't ease others. Don't be those people who connect to your heart. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't want to do it. Don't, don't be a people person. Or people who are going to circulate yeah. in and out of your I'm life for the rest straight. of your life. And just have a memory of that in the back of your mind. And there's certain people in your life that the first time you meet them you're not going to think it's spectacular but a year later you're like oh my god this was so inspiring like I've had all those range of friendships and I, I'm one of those special people in the world that I'm still really good friends with the person that I met when I was three years old I'm one of those rare people most people don't have that. Giant, do you have do you have a friend that you He's would 16. say that you would feel that would carry you the distance? So you're thinking about the pre-states. We're all thinking about friends that we have that we've held the distance in right. different stages in life. Do you have somebody she that will. you feel like could go the distance? Say, say what you did. Who would you I mean, consider? 16, you know, who would you consider your best friend right now? Um, that you feel, yeah, the Sunday brothers. Yeah, the Sunday brothers. Yeah, he's not even in the running. But, um. <laughs> Which is totally fine. Which is. Um. Really, it's all lies. Um, it's all lies. I know. His I brother's know lies, but like. His brother's his main th- bitch. He's <laughs> 26. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, listen. Different, you different ages, but yeah. these two are these two. Yeah. You want yeah. to know yeah. about something rare and grateful yeah. for? Yeah, these two. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. They're, they're like, super. I haven't find that much. Super close, these two. I get it. My sister's way older than me. I get it. <laughs> Go ahead, John. Um, what was the question? Who do you feel? Tyler, basically. Yeah. You you feel I, know, I know Tyler. Like, I know about Tyler. Right now, who's going to be by your side when you're... Who would you consider points. your best friend right now? I mean, Tyler, yeah. There you go. Very simple. Tell me uh, why Tyler's your best friend. Don't get one. protective over the 16-year-olds. Just well... <laughs> I mean, there's not many reasons. I don't have uh, many friends to begin with. It's usually by myself. But Why do you feel like you don't have very many friends? I just don't. I don't know too many people. You know what I'm saying? You like do I, not allow yourself to know too many people, or you don't want to know too many people? Uh, it just doesn't happen. I kind of. Why just, does it not happen? You have to allow it. Well, people have different personalities. No, do you not like people? No, he does like He's people. reserved. Not in John's personality to be no. that big soft ass guy. That's it, yeah, that's exactly uh, right. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. Agreed. I just, you know. Why do you feel that? I, I just, I'm curious. I, I, I don't really talk to many people. I don't know too many people. Yeah, you don't know too many people. Which is fine. Because you're not going to be around them. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I, I, not if it's not in the car. I've never, I've person. never asked myself that question. I've never, so you know, look deeper into it. You I, okay with it? Yeah, I'm fine with then it. That's fine. That, that, you don't uh, get yourself any My this, question in you being a 16 year old kid in high school, do you have a friend, one, Silas, that you feel like had things going off the rail? What, that he'd be there for me? I feel yeah. like it, it would depend on what it is. But he said I, his fear his friend back on the court a couple of times. Well, I, I haven't done anything. He's all more, the progress. So it sounds like John's being more the, the good Samaritan. In right, it does. Right? Well, that's how his mother views me. <laughs> <laughs> and you feel like she's wrong? No. I guess I'm more of the uh, innocent child. He didn't grow up, you know all fucking up, up in the suburban life. Where did he grow up? Uh, was it uh, Salt Lake City, Florida? Around the, the rough area, around Florida. Okay. Near the Miami area, I think. Uh, he's told me some stories. He's, he's witnessed some pretty uh, heinous things. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of violence, a lot of, a lot of gang life. Um, Well, he, he moved, what, seventh grade, I think? I didn't really meet him until freshman year, really. I mean, I saw him in the halls and everything, but we never started talking uh, until, you know, he became my plug and sold me meth accidentally. Really? Uh, and we've been best <laughs> friends ever since. His wait, brother wait, his brother wait, looks at him like we're going to kill him. How did he become your partner? He, he became the, uh, the, the, the plug. I don't know if you understand that term. But he uh, he he basically sold me uh, pills. That's 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 what he did. Wait. At fourteen. It was a white powdered uh, pill. He so it was a laxative. He no no no. It wasn't laxatives. Just say laxatives. Oh yeah, laxatives. <laughs> um, so now we're gonna go into a whole different topic. It's probably laxatives. Oh yeah, laxatives. Because <laughs> laxatives. <laughs> Because laxatives makes your whole entire body itch, right? So tell me um, why you became wait. friends. Oh You're the young in the group. We, we just, I, I don't know. What was it about him that drew you to him? Uh, I don't know. Besides we, 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 <laughs> you're supposed to say laxative. We, uh. Besides laxatives. Yeah, laxatives. Anyways. I uh, really want to be honest right now. So he sold me a pill that was yeah, and it just fucking skips over it. <laughs> so how? So, so you, so you two years you're later, you're fourteen when you had this interaction. You're sixteen now. Why do you think he's your best friend? I don't know. He's it's been there through that I've been constantly uh, talking to all this time. I, I I don't have any explanation for it. I just I you could just I just know that's what now, happened. I don't, I don't actually remember how it happened. No, but I think, like, John's standpoint is he was there for a, a random stranger, and they became I think, friends. Well, it was at this point I decided to get rid of the rest of the conversation on that topic of uh, John's activities at school and his friends and their activities at school. So in an effort to protect everyone, including my son, I got rid of it. I'm sure you understand. <laughs> At first we think he's joking around about it, but you never know. So to be on the safe side, I got rid of it. On another note, I find it interesting that both of my sons have just as small of a circle of friends in their current stages in life as well as mine we all shared the exact small circle when we were all in high school at different ages obviously i had one good friend in middle school shout out to mandy who's a new grandma relatively new out in oregon my one good friend 
out in Oregon as well when we went to high school. That was Amy. Shout out to you, girl. Other than that, today I have a very small circle of close friends. It would be Melissa and Tara. My main bitches. I have love for my buddies that are like brothers to me. You have Donnie, Frankie, Anthony, some other really good people that I don't have a whole list to to name, but they've all had an impact in my life, and they are highly appreciated. Uh, Other than that, everyone else's acquaintances, you know, or people that you connect with here and there, and I value, I totally value that, but I have those certain people that you can call in the middle of the night when you're in need, and that would be those two, uh, Tara and Melissa. When you have a small circle of good people, that's all you need, so... I'm wrapping up this episode. So if you're still interested in hearing the discussion, check out Part B. This wraps up Part A, Sunday Fun Day with Friends and Family. Now, if you're interested in hearing another part of the conversation, head back into the podcast platform of your choice and look for Part B, Sunday Fun Day with Friends and Family. For more information... Head over to my website at www.constructiontales.com. I thank you for making it to this point and listening. You're highly appreciated. I wish you a great day. This wraps up another episode on the Verbally Disastrous Podcast that can be found on Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube. For more information, head over to www.constructiontales.com. Thank you for listening and have a great one.